Okay, guys, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, the relationship between COPD, low back pain, and then motor control. I'm like, what may be going on here, All right? So patients with COPD report almost two times greater pain than patients are than healthy adults. Moderate to severe pain is reported about seven times more often in patients with COPD. Um, this is great coming from, uh, from uh, Hajgen Jabi, which was published in 2012 in Respiratory Medicine. Uh, and it finds that it interferes with their daily lives um, you know, more often than patients with healthy individuals. And that the pain is more often observed in the neck and the trunk. Now that makes sense if you have you know, accessory muscles kind of working more. Remember, our accessory muscles are always sort of involved. Remember, we talked about the upper chest wall expansion that happens during normal breathing. Um, but they're not supposed to be providing you know, that much effort, right? In COPD, the diaphragm is overactive. It's, you're breathing a lot faster. Um, it's put in a weakened position, may have some changes to it. So those accessory muscles are working kind of in overdrive um, to keep you alive. Um, but they're not designed to do that, right? Because remember, you're acquiring this condition. It's not something you're born with. So we may end up seeing that those muscles just might be overused and that can cause soreness right, um, in, in those neck muscles. Trunk muscles, we think maybe um, trunk pain or back pain, we think that could be related to some of the changes in the thoracic spine if you're hunched over, um, as well as there may be some um, systemic inflammation we talked about in CBD. Again, if you have that higher amounts of inflammation, TNF alpha, IL-6 are implicated, uh, that impairs our ability to um, down regulate or have descending modulation of pain. Um, again, if, that, if you have inflammation affecting the nervous system, it's gonna affect, or in, affect our ability to suppress painful signals, right? Um, so we see with, with back pain, we see you know, in general. Um, we also think that like the central processing of dyspnea and pain, are, they're kind of related. So we think because patients with have COPD, the, the centers in the brain related to shortness of breath are kind of adjacent to the areas of pain. So if those are kind of in hyperdrive, maybe they're spilling over to some of the pain centers in the brain. So either way, there's multitudes of mechanisms involved here, even sleep quality. Again, we mentioned patients with respiratory disease typically don't sleep very well. We know that's super important for you know, controlling, um, you know, especially you know, pain. Um, so however, it's also been postulated that there may be some biomechanical roles here, right? So the diaphragm, um, which we mentioned in patients with COPD, um, which is weakened or in put into a weakened position, overworked, um, has a postural role as well. So the diaphragm, in addition to its vital respiratory role, does play an integral role in postural control, right? I want to stress this. This is done automatically, you do not consciously think about this, right? It's an anticipatory postural adjustment that's done with the, uh, the pelvic floor, the lumbar multifidi, on um, the transverse abdominis. This happens before you begin um, any you know, volitional movement, right? You don't ever think about this. This is something that's done automatically, okay? Anticipatory postural adjustment. Um, and normally when you're healthy, you're able to do both, right? And we actually think there may be different parts of the diaphragm that contribute to more to ventilation and some that may have more of a postural role. You can get into the weeds on this, not probably super important, but realize that you know, in a healthy individual, right, you're able to do a little bit of both. You're able to do, to do a little bit of the balancing role or postural control role. You're able to do the, the breathing role. However, like we mentioned, in patients with COPD, that diaphragm is often in a weakened position. They have a higher drive to breathe. So we think what may happen is in patients with COPD, the, the brain, the body kind of spares, you know, uh, you know the respiratory component because we need it and kind of gives way um, to the uh, postural. So we preferentially, you know, prefer breathing over motor control so this APA may be you know may not be there in patients with COPD right um, so because again we're always going to preserve breathing because we need to do that to live 
right? So, you know, in a healthy person, they're able to do this, probably not a problem, but in patients with COPD, it might be an issue. So it's what we actually find. There's some great work by Lottie Jansen, who's based in uh, Belgium. Uh, she's also done a lot of great work with uh, Allison McConnell, who's based in the UK. And they looked at individuals with COPD in terms of postural sway. Now, again, there are other factors here, right? It's not just, you know, the diaphragm, but we think this may be a role. So if we look at postural control, so um, key thing I want to emphasize, like sway, right? Like as long as you come back to center, you have a technically a stable system, but a higher amount of sway could set, set the stage for maybe a postural disturbance where you lose your balance, right? So we can see even in a healthy individual, there's always going to be some sway that's not abnormal, right? Like if, as long as you're kind of, you know, getting back to that same set point, um, you have a stable system, you know, however, with patients with COPD, we see that sway is just much more pronounced way more pronounced, right? Way more sway. Now, while they didn't fall over, um, you know, they have a much higher risk if you can keep getting closer to the boundaries of your, or your limits of stability, right? So again, interesting. And then we look at um, when we isolate what motor strategies they have, individuals with COPD essentially lose the ability to um, they, they lose the ability or they lose the gain, basically, of their trunk signal. So uh, COPD is in the white bars and uh, the black bars are individuals with uh, just, just healthy individuals. So what they did is they imposed vibration onto um, the ankles and onto the trunk. And the idea is that we stimulate one of those muscles to kind of, you know, correct themselves, right? So the vibration basically um, imposes like a stretch response to those muscles, and then we would expect them to contract and kind of right balance. So we found in individuals with COPD, they have a much larger gain or much greater response in ankle strategies, a much lower response in trunk strategies, um, and a much overall um, greater response when we did both. So what this indicates is that they are much more highly um, utilizing ankle strategies for writing responses because they lose the trunk. They lose what we call multi-segmental control. So typically your balance systems, you've got you know ankle strategies, knee strategies, hip strategies, trunk strategies. If you lose one of them, you're gonna be more reliant on ankle strategy, you know, on, on other strategies. And we find in patients with COPD, they lose some of those trunk strategies. They um, then you know, are more reliant on those ankle strategies, for example. Uh, the problem is those lower extremity muscles, the calves, are weaker often in patients with COPD because maybe they're inactive or maybe they, you know, have some of those skeletal muscle changes. So what this means is maybe the um, these patients, you know, we lose those trunk strategies because we lose the diaphragm's role, that anti APA in combination with those other muscles. They are more reliant on ankle strategies, but those muscles are weaker. Um, so if they have a disturbance, whatever they have left in the ankles might not be enough to keep them upright. Right. So again, um, you know, to think a little bit uniquely, think a little bit differently about patient in these patients with um, COPD. So we think again, the diaphragm may be a role here, maybe other factors here. Um, and we think as this relates to see if the back pain, maybe the loss of that anticipatory postural adjustment, that trunk strategy may contribute potentially to them you know, having, having back pain because they lose some of that you know, uh, trunk motor control. Again, pain's way complex. A lot of things involved here. Balance is way complex. This is something that we may be able to identify in patients um, with COPD. Um, by doing respiratory muscle assessment and potentially training those muscles. And we'll cover that in the next unit. All right, thank you.